In the world, we would say, don't believe the hype. But you know what? God is good. God is real good. And all that stuff she named, it's not because of me. Because I was a sinner. I was a bona fide sinner before I came to the Lord. And I told the Lord, you know what? I put in work out there. I got to put in work in here. If I could do it out there, I have to do double time here. So that has nothing to do with pride. That has nothing to do with none of that. Mary, thank you for singing that song. That here I am to worship because you guys, if I would have been singing that song, I would have probably been crying. That song touches my heart. My testimony is in that song. But I thank you guys, Bishop, Pastor Nalen. I got a word for y'all. Y'all saying that now, but <laughs> it's kind of harsh. But you know what? We're in revival. And this is the awakening revival. And I'm glad to see a lot of most of the people here are the people that are from here. Because God got a word for us. But I'm going to go to the throne of grace and prayer. We're going to make this nice and easy. Don't take none of this personal, but take it to your heart. This is not coming from me. This is what the Lord gave me. And how she said, and a form of worship is obedience. The word says obedience is better than sacrifice. I got to do what he told me to do, and I have to do it the way he told me to do it. So we're going to go into uh, prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus, just thanking you and praising you for a day that I've never seen, an opportunity that I've never even seen coming. Lord, I ask you to bless this revival. Lord, we're coming to be revived. But as you showed me what my assignment is tonight, it's some things we have to give up. You cannot put your holiness and your anointing on something when we still have sin stains in our hearts, anger in our heart, bitterness in our heart, jealousy in our heart, backbiting in our heart, vengeance in our heart, lying and deceit in our heart. And so, Lord, in order for us to be revived, we got to come to you. we got to give those things to you so we can empty out our hearts so you can pour in because your holiness will never stand on top of sin. And so, Lord, I ask you to purge us on tonight. Lord, move by your spirit. Lord, we just ask you to bind the devil, cast him out of this building. Release your warring angels. Release ministering angels. Lord, walk the aisles, walk the pews. Speak to the people. Give them deliverance. Set them free, Lord. Heal them. Whatever the issue is, Lord, we ask you to come into the room tonight. You're already here, and I thank you for that. Because, Holy Spirit, I cannot do nothing of myself. I cannot do none of this if you don't be a part of it. Because I'm following your lead, so Lord, I ask you tonight, help me keep up with you. And so, Lord, I ask you to bless these people. Stir our spirits, stir our souls. Help us to be real Christians. Help us to do what it is that you're calling us to do. Because this idol and this back burner and this lukewarm and this straddling the fence is not working anymore. We got to move away from that. We got to come more towards you. We have to give up the things that we wanted. Because it's not about us, Lord. It's all about you. It's all about the purpose. It's all about the call. It's all about doing what it is you're calling us to do. So I ask you to move by your spirit in here tonight, Lord. Help us to not be offended by the word, but help us to receive the word. That you can renew us, you can refresh us, you can repair us, you can restore us. And send us up where you want us to be. So Lord, I just ask you right now, word my mouth. Don't let it come from me. Let it come from you. Give it to them the same way you gave it to me. And I'll give you all the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I looked up a couple of words. First word is volition. It's the faculty or power of using one's will. God gave us that. It's voluntary we have the choice to choose God by our own volition. We have the choice not to choose God by our own volition. He's not going to come and get us. He's not going to do anything to us. But a lot of times we have a tendency, we ask God, like we're in a revival. Revive me, Lord, as if we don't have a part in this. We have a big part in this. That's the second word. I looked up revival. Oxford's dictionary said it's an instance of something becoming popular, active, or important again. You hear that? Important again. It used to be important, but something happened. Something came up. 
Something distracted me. Something got my attention and it's not important anymore. But we don't get to do that to, to the Lord because she just sung. I never know how much it costs to see my sin up on the cross. And I get to diminish you down from important and put something in front of you. That's idolatry. We got to be careful of that. And then there's another one. Um, revival is also, now this is in the Webster's Dictionary. It's a restoration of bodily or mental vigor to life or consciousness. So you walk away from God and you say he ain't important. Y'all basically are saying we lost our mind. You have to lose your mind to say that Jesus is not important to you anymore. And then the last one, this is another powerful one. A new presentation or publication of something old. Same old God. Same God, God of ages. Yesterday, today, and evermore, he's going to be the same. But we are in 2023, so where so many things came up that we found some new things to gravitate to other than God. But this is an old thing that needs to come back new. I used to pray that. When I used to do First Friday prayer, we would be in here from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And a lot of times it wouldn't be no more than four or five of us in here. And I would walk through here and I was like, Lord, I need you to do a new thing. Do a new thing. Bring the old way back into the church. The old way is new to us because that's not how we do it. That's how we need to be doing it. And so God is so good. So I have a scripture that I want to read to you guys. It's kind of long, but I'm going to be quick but precise so you can get it. It's Matthew 21, 33 through 34. It's a parable. And it's called the parable of the wicked husbandman. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and left it to the husbandman and went to a faraway country. And when the time came of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandman that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But the last of all, he sent to them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said amongst themselves, this is the heir. Let's come and kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. And when the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard cometh, what will he do to those husbandmen? And they said unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto the husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of their seasons. Jesus said unto them, did you not read in the scriptures the stone which the, the, stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruit thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomever it shall fall on, it will grind him to powder. This is Jesus talking about himself. He was coming to build the kingdom of God. And the religious people of that day didn't receive Jesus. They didn't believe Jesus was the son of God. And so they wanted to do it their way. So my subject is in here. Instead of you falling on a stone being broken, break yourself. Break yourself. And what I'm coming from is that is, you guys, we have hidden sins. We have transgressions. We have iniquities. We have things inside of us that some things you can't tell other people. And so you keep it inside of yourselves. We have been hardened and don't even realize it. 
we come in, we sing the songs, we clap our hands, we do our dance, we praise the Lord. But there is a scripture the Lord said, they praise me with my, their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. God is cleaning up his house. He's tired of playing, us playing. We're faking on him. He knows we're faking on him. We all have gifts. We all have talents. We all have purposes inside of us. And when we allow sin to hinder us, our little hidden secrets. See, the Bible said it's the small foxes that spoils the vine. So there's little things you'd be like, well, I'm not doing that much. But is it in alignment with the word? Is it alignment with God? Some of us, can we even hear the Holy Spirit when he tells us don't go there? Don't touch that. Don't do that. Or do when we hear him, do we override it? God is trying to clean up his house. I told him I'll be obedient and I'll do it. You, you picked the right one, Lord. I'll do it. Because this is the thing. At the end of the day, we all have gifts and talents inside of us. We Everything that this house needs, the five-fold ministry is in this house. But we're preoccupied. There's another agenda. The enemy gives us another agenda. And he has your attention. And you're so busy chasing that that you're not even looking at your priority list. You have priorities. I want to be rich. I want to do this. I want that house. I want that car. I want that thing. You got that thing up there, but where's Jesus? Every time you get a new thing, you put it higher up, and he's going lower down. I'm going to show you something. He told me to do this. Can you guys see this thing? It's clear at the bottom, crystal clear at the bottom. The Lord helped me with this today. It's crystal clear at the bottom. It's a real pretty blue. Then there's a tan looking, and then they're black on the top. When we first came to God, we were real excited, and we were like these crystals at the bottom. And then we got comfortable. I don't want to go to Bible study. I don't want to go to those classes. I'll go to church on Sunday. We start turning blue. And then you backed off and said, well, I just really don't have to do nothing. I'll just go to church on Sunday. Then you turn that tan. And then COVID came and gave us a reason not to gather. And a lot of us turned black. That's our hearts. When God look at us, that's how he see our heart. And then we're saying, God, can you revive me? And he's like, can no, can you give up some of that stuff and come back to me? Can you turn your heart back to me? Can you love me like you used to? I have so much more for you than what you're receiving. You took salvation and you stopped there. But I have the Holy Spirit, which is your power. It's your teacher. It's your comforter. He's all of that. But you don't get that part because you stopped at salvation. God didn't save us for us to be saved. God saved me to help other people. It took me some time to learn that. When I very first became an evangelist, you guys, I was so nervous and I was talking to God. God talks back to me. And I was like, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know no scriptures. And I gave him every excuse. And he said, you know what? You don't have to do it. You don't have to do this. He was teaching me about volition. I won't make you do it. You don't have to do it. But I thought people would be blessed hearing it come from you. And I thought you would be blessed because of what you're doing. I can bless you. I was like, okay, Lord, I don't know how. So if you teach me, I'll do it. So basically, if you come with me, I'll do it. Y'all, that's how I got to where I'm at now. God is your personal God. Talk to him. He will meet you where you at. Tell him where I can't do this. Because you can't. On your best day, doing it out of yourself, you can't because we're flesh. We're sinful. We have a sinful tolerance. As long as we are in these bodies, sin is going to be able to attach itself to us in one way or another. So we're not perfect. We're not working like, walking like God, but because we, our spirit is reborn and then we get filled with the Holy Spirit, y'all, that's power. That is some serious power, and it just blows me away. We used to have revivals, and people would fly in, and they would say that there's a dark cloud over this state, and it's demonic and all that. And how are we full of the Holy Ghost and power, the Holy Ghost that hovered over the earth when it was void and dark is in you? So how is a demon-possessed cloud going to hold us back from being able to glorify our God. 
That is impossible. That should not be. And that shows because we don't know our word and we do not know the power that we have inside of us. And this is what revival about is revive that power that you put inside of me. Help me understand what it is that I have the ability to do. And then help me also to understand that it's not my ability to do it. It's your anointing. It's your ability. So we won't get caught up in pride. You'll be in the same position that the devil's in. That's what he wants us to do. And so we need balance. We need to come to these classes. We need to come to Bible study because you don't get the revelation. The Bible tells you to forsake not the assembling yourselves together as some do. Because when we're all together like this, do you know how many angels is in here? You know how much anointing is in here? And when we plug into this thing the way we're supposed to be plugged into it, it is power in this house. There's no way that somebody can come in here sick or in a wheelchair or whatever. We're supposed to have that resurrection power in us. We're supposed to be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. We're supposed to be able to raise the dead. And the Lord said many other things than that. We can't even cast a demon out. It's like, Lord, what's wrong with it? It's nothing wrong with God's power. It's us. What is in us that we are allowing to hinder the move of God? I call it having being in cahoots with the devil. When you go do whatever it is that he wants you to do, but you think you're keeping it a secret, so you're going to come back to church and you know the motion. If you've been here two years, three years, you know our songs. You know when to sway and when to rock and to clap your hands. You know when to get that tink in your back and throw your hand. It look holy. But it ain't nothing behind that. And God knows that. When somebody, I always say, when somebody come in this door, this is the ultimate right here. When somebody come in this door and don't look like us and not dress like us, how do we receive them? Some of us look at them people so cold that it makes them want to turn back and go. But because the Lord is telling them to come, they'll be obedient. I'm going to sit through it today, but I won't be back next week. And then the Lord is saying, mm, I'm watching this. And I sent them to Highland. And look how them people treat my people. That ought not to be. And so, Lord, we got we to gotta ask the Lord to help us teach us how to love. I had to ask the Lord to teach me everything. I stood over there when I really, I was serious when I came in here. But I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, you know what? If I'm a co-laborer with you and you work with me, I need to know you like you know me. Because you know me. You know all about me. You know my rising in the day and the down setting. You know the stories that I won't tell nobody else. You know what I did in the back, in the dark, in the corner, behind the booth, whatever, how that little saying used to go. You know all of that, but I don't know much about you. I need to learn about you. You need, we got to hook up. And so I would just talk. And so I would walk around speaking in tongues. Because it was like, okay, Lord, that's a gift you gave me. I need to get close to the Holy Spirit. And now I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Y'all, that's my number one. I get up and I talk to God. Do you know that GPS... The Holy Spirit is like God's GPS. I say, Lord, when I pull up to the store, I don't want to feel like walking today. Can I get a spot close to the Holy Spirit? Hold me a spot. I'm serious. He do it. See, the Bible say, according to your faith, be it done unto you. If you can believe God for a parking spot, he'll give you one. You got to be able to believe him. And you got to get that close. See, we got to get that close with him. Because, see, you can't be a stranger. And I had told him, I said, Holy Spirit, you know what? I want to get to the point where if you say, go witness to the girl in the red dress, I won't be afraid. Because remind, I'm reminding you, I was afraid when I was evangelist. See, the enemy does some cold-blooded stuff on us. He played games with our mind. And if you're not careful, you'll fall for it. And so I was like, Lord, I need to know you like that. And so this is a little quick testimony. I was downtown. And I'm an evangelist. And you're supposed to just be able to walk up on anybody and evangelize. So I was sitting on the bench outside in front of my job. I used to work at, I, I'm still at the gas company, but the Max, the first stop of the Max. And I, so I would sit on that bench to get the sun. And this gothic girl came. 
And she sat down and she was all black and had her black eyes and all this stuff. And I was sitting there and I was like, okay, Lord, how do you witness to that? And I mean, her demonic stuff was strong because you could feel it. You could feel it. So now I was like, Lord, I know I ain't going to be able to penetrate that. And so you could feel the energy between us. I was like, Lord, this is real. And so then I was like, Lord, and I got to break this. I can't do this. So I got up and I walked away. And I was saying, Lord, forgive me because I missed that one. And so I walked to the corner, went to the end of the block and went across the street. And this white guy was, he had his garbage bag and he was running across Front Street. And he was like, hey, sister, hey, sister. So I stopped and I was talking to him and I was able to witness to him. And I, he said, are you embarrassed walking with me? I said, no. And I walked him all around, and uh, he was telling me this story about when he was in Virginia. He heard this beautiful singing, and it was a church. I said, you should have went in there. Yeah. He said, I did. He said, I looked in, and it was a whole lot of black people. This is a white guy. He said, so I went back out. I said, somebody should have came and got you. He said, she did. It was Sister Vicky. So I talked to him, and then I went into my building at work. And he said, you know what? I gave him a couple of dollars for bus fare. You know what? That doesn't matter. When God tugs your heart and tell you to do it, you do it. So he said, well, in Virginia, it was Sister Vicky. In Portland, it was Sister Judy. Y'all, you never know how God is going to use you. I thought I just copped out, chickened out. But God had a setup around the corner. I was supposed to go around that corner. Because the harvest was around the corner. It wasn't right there sitting at that bench with me. And I'm saying that to say this. God will always make a way and have an opportunity for us to do what it is that he's calling us to do. And it's gradual steps how we do what it is that he's calling us to do. You take steps towards your thing. I didn't start off a minister. I said when the very first started, when we got deep in, I was telling the pastor, I wouldn't have never thought this for me. But you know what that shows? God has a purpose and a plan for every last one of us. And who I was in the world is nowhere near who I am right now. So that's why I couldn't see myself like that. But the Bible tells us that the enemy comes to rob, kill, and destroy. And he did some devastating stuff to me. I wouldn't let him have my self-esteem. But if I didn't have no self-esteem, I could have been drugged out right now. I could be homeless. I could be anything. But I knew that there was a God because my grandmother taught us that. And I just hung on to that. And I was like, no, my life don't have to go out like this. And I just kept hanging on. And I went through fire. And I went through rain and storms and all that. But look at where God got me. Where he needs me to be. And it was like, oh, my God. This was like so much at one time. But God told me tonight he wants to heal us. He wants us to take a little tour in your mind. What's those things that's standing in between you and him? Because there's some stuff there. And he wants us to examine ourselves like communion. Let a man examine himself. Because if you eat unworthily, you're bringing damnation down on yourself. There's an anointing that God wants to release in this house. He has sent us ministers. He has sent us pastors. He has sent us elders. He is setting Highland up. He is setting us up. But are we going to be so blind and not see it? And that's what he said. Go explain to my people what I'm doing. It's nothing that we have to do. When we give our life to the Lord, he gives us his spirit. He re, he, our spirit is reborn. He gives us the Holy Spirit. He gives us his word. He gives us in the word how we should live, how we should do certain things. So all we have to do is our job is believe on him who God has sent us. The son of God. Believe on him. Love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Love our neighbor as ourselves. He said the greatest commands, it hangs on those two. Let's try to be right with God. And so what he wants us to do tonight is worship him in a spirit of truth. 
God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Get real with your real God. Because he already know what's going on. Y'all, I was a mess. I used to roll blunts and talk to God and go out on the balcony and smoke them. And then would tell the Lord, I don't know why I'm doing this. And the Lord was like, you know what? You really don't. Because I didn't. Because that was a trajectory of the life I lived. I wasn't living a godly life because I wasn't shown a godly life. I kind of had a hard life. A real hard life. My sister can vouch for it. And for me to be where I'm at right now, this is nothing but the grace of God. And I'm saying that to say this. You do not have to be perfect and holy for God to deal with you. You were created in his image and his likeness. It's a tug of war for you. Every day there's a tug of war for you. The enemy wants your soul and God wants your soul. The enemy wants your mind and God wants your mind. The enemy wants your heart and God wants your heart. Every day, every second, every hour of the day. There you go, right there. You have a volition of who it is that you want to choose. And we got to be careful. How the Bible said, be careful for nothing. But in everything with prayer and supplication, give thanks unto the Lord. Thank him for what he does. God do things for us and we just take it for granted. Like he was supposed to do that. He wasn't supposed to do that. He's trying to bless you. When you receive the blessings of God in the right mindset and with the right heart condition, he's going to bless you more. But when he bless you and you say, oh, he was supposed to do that. That's a lot of nerves. How are you going to stand before a holy God knowing that you sinned? You know what you did. And then you're going to stand before a holy God and expect something from him. We don't get to expect nothing from him. Everything he gives to us is a gift. Every morning we open our eyes, that is a gift. We're not promised anything. We don't get to be puffed up in ourselves saying, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You don't even know. That's like the guy in the Bible who was going, he built his barns. This man was so rich that he tore down the barn to make a bigger barn. Because, yeah, he, 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 he balling into himself. He's going to be rich. And the angel of the Lord came to that night. Thou fool, your soul is required to you this night. You ain't going to see tomorrow. So what they going to do? Stop building? Because you the one with the money. You the one with the vision. We got to be careful how we living out here. We cannot just go before God any kind of way. He is so tired of that. He is so tired of that. You guys, we're, we're repenting from dead works and ain't saying nothing about the new ones. You keep doing this repeated, the repetitive, Lord, forgive me for that. But you got some new stuff that you're doing that you want to keep doing. So I'm not going to ask him to forgive me for that. Because I understand the scripture of saying that you stop repenting for dead works. Y'all, we got to get real. It's time to get real. This is spiritual awakening. And we really need to spiritually awake. Wake up, church. Because we sleeping. During COVID. Did you guys notice that COVID had a shutdown? I was saying back then, that's a shutdown for us to learn how to do church at home. Get close to God at home because he wants us to go back to worshiping and serving him and praising and doing worship in your house with your family. He did that because we would run to the church and at home, we at home turning up. We at home partying and kicking it. And the Lord was like, look at my people. So I'm going to allow something to a spin to happen. But this is something that's crazy right here. Did you guys ever notice that after the pandemic, it was a lot, it was like a paradigm shift during the uh, pandemic. Evil is on the rise. It got worse. And the church was asleep. The church is still asleep. We were supposed to be preparing ourselves while we were shut in that was supposed to be our personal shut-in. We were supposed to be anointing ourselves, fasting and praying, reading the word. We were supposed to be having church at home. And then this is the crazy part. Pandemic gone, church is open, most of the people want to stay home. 
See? The devil think he's slick, like we don't see that. See, y'all, and this is why we need to be praying and interceding. Intercessory prayer is real. We've been praying for revival, praying for revival, and I just love the Lord because you see what he did. Okay, you praying for it, I'm going to put you in it. And see, that's how God works. But I love him for it because God is a good God. And you know, you guys, we have gifts. We have talents inside of us that we know nothing about. I don't even know the, how deep or how wide. I don't know what my, all my calling is. I'm walking into it. And it's like, like one of those little games that, um, where you walk and the little things come to you and you walk again and they come again. And you keep walking and they just keep coming. And that's how it is. I'm discovering myself every day. Every day. The Lord talks to me. He reveals stuff to me. Strangers can come and, and say something and the Lord has a revelation. They, he sends messengers. We got to pay attention. We cannot be so caught up in self. Your self, your original natural self is your enemy. Because that's the one who the enemy speaks to and you're comfortable with him. Because you used to run with him. He know what you like. He know what you don't like. He know how much you can take. He know when you're going to call it quits. He knows how to deliver that little package. And you be like, oh, goody. Oh, look what I got. And you open it and boom. It explodes in your face. He's giving you gratifications. And you're steady walking further and further back. Then you look up and you'd be like, my relationship with God, I ain't been in church in so long. I wouldn't even feel right if I went back in there. They're going to ask where I've been and what I've been doing. And I done went to the club a couple of times with my cousin. They done thought I backslid. He puts that stuff in your head. And then he shames you and make it where you're intimidated to come into the church. So what you do is you end up really backsliding. But y'all, we got to pray for one another. The Bible tells us if you see your brother or your sister overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, not just the church person who got that fire in it, I got to go get you told. Not her. You who are spiritual, go to that person in meekness, considering yourself. Considering yourself, because you also can be tempted. It might be you next week. The Bible tells us to know those that labor among us. I know a lot of faces. But very few of you I really know spiritually. And this is a trick of the enemy. He has us divided. I said one night, um, Pastor, we should have, and Elder Pullen had the same idea. We need to have a testimony night. With the saints, with the leaders, with the ones that's working and we need to know where you really came from. And we're not, we don't need to know that because I'm being nosy and want to know your past. God has cleaned you up. But where you came from, you came from somewhere out there in that world. And somebody's going to come through that door that can relate to where you came from. But how do we know to set them up with you when we don't know where you came from? Because that's the way the church should be. We're not a secluded club. We need to know where you've been, not because I want to know your past because you just look like you was a mess. No. I was a little bit. But the thing is, I can minister to a whole lot of people because of the places that I've been and some of the things that I've done. So when that broken person come in here, because I'm going to tell you something about the world. Some of them people believe in God. Some of them know that they need God. And when you got, do you know how when you got an enemy inside of you in your head fighting you, telling you you better not go to church, them people are full of it. And then you come in and they come in and see us looking like the world, acting like the world. You come in here looking for God and can't find no love. That ought not be in the house of God. We say we connected to the Lord. We connected to God. God is love and we don't ooze love. Love should be oozing out our pores. And not that old funny world love stuff. Real care and concern. You can hug a person. They know that thing is cold if it's not real. But when you really have the love of God and you hug that person nine times out of ten, when you let them go, they got tears in their eyes. Because there's something in that. 
And that's why when I used to be the, the greeter, I would give the ladies a hug and the men got a handshake. And they would always say, I felt that hug. And I know you felt that hug because that's the love of God. Because when I came, it was cold. And I said, Lord, I made a vow. I'm not going to let nobody come in that door and feel the way I felt. I'm not going to let nobody do it. And you'll see, that's why y'all see me just going up to people, talking to them, because they need that. And then how do we know that God didn't tell them to come here? I do not want to be found guilty when the Lord sends somebody in here and we watch them go back out that door the way they came in and God sent them here. We all fail. He would deal with us on that. We would need to be dealt with on that. And so I'm almost going to come to a close, but I'm going to do what the Lord said that he wanted us to do. Think about whatever it is that stands in the way of you and God. Lift it up to him. Kevin, play something really like you do. Y'all, this man of God, he got them fingers. He know how to play them holy keys. But you guys really think about that. Block the other people out, even if it ain't but a minute or two. We got to get right with God. Because I'm going to pray a repentance prayer when we done. We got to get back to where we started. And the thing about that is, is how do you preach a message like this on a Sunday? You preach this to the people of God that are in the house of God that are seeking God. And you let them know what the Lord is saying. It's not that I don't want to heal you, pour my anointing on you, but I can't. God cannot look upon sin. Remember when Jesus was in the garden and then he prayed about that cup? If there be any way that this can be taken from me, but nevertheless, not my will, your will be done. Because he knew what was in that cup. In that cup, people say it was just sin. No, death was in that cup. And God cannot look upon sin. And so he knew that when he drank of that cup, his father couldn't look at him. So he knew that right at this moment, I'm going to be separated for God. And he did that to redeem us. And what we do to him in return is don't even give him his utmost respect. He died on that cross. Those nails in his hands, I couldn't have dealt with that. None of us could have. We were worthy of death. Jesus died to redeem us. And it was a plan from the beginning. It would be a cold thing. There's no way I have one child. If I told her, I call her little, little, you're going to have to do something that I totally despise, and I won't even be able to look at you. For that moment, I won't even like you. And you're doing this to save the world. And her response would probably be, Mom, it ain't even that serious. Them people don't care about you. Them people ain't thinking about you. They don't like me. But God was, Jesus was obedient. He was 100% God just like he was 100% man. The Bible tells us that we do not have a high priest that is not touched by the feeling of our infirmities. But in all points was tempted such as we are yet without sin. We owe him. He said, for every temptation, there is a way of escape. He has everything we need. We got to ask him. We got to turn our hearts back to him. This is what revival is all about. Get our hearts right with God. Let's return back to God. We can dance and shout another time. Let's get right. I bet there is not a dance that you can dance when you're in alignment with God. You really can dance now. The guilt is off of you. The shame is off of you. You know you're walking in alignment with your creator. Ain't nothing bigger than that. That blows me away. Often. I say it a lot. I'm walking in step with my creator. I was walking in the opposite direction of my creator. And knew it. It's the one thing that when you don't know the sin of omission, when you don't know what you're doing, it's something that you're not doing that you should be doing. 
But then there's a thing called willful disobedience. And I was walking in willful disobedience and knew it and would apologize for it but stayed in it. We got to watch ourselves. We got to watch ourselves. We'll get comfortable in stuff that we shouldn't be in, but nobody know what you're doing. So you're comfortable in it, but you're out of alignment with God. That's just like how when you run over a curb or something and then your alignment goes off and you're driving down the street and your car pulls to the right or it pulls to the left. Or sometimes it just might do that wobble thing because you done messed up your A-frame. We can't keep doing that. We can't keep doing that. This is time to get this right. So you guys, can we acknowledge God? And can we tell him, Father, forgive me for what I'm doing? Because this is not my intent. This is not the way I meant for it to be. But sometimes you just fall into it because you just go with the flow. I have a thing me and my sister and them guys be talking. And I always say, always know what spirit is operating in you at every moment. When you put a check on yourself like that, it's like, Lord, you know when it's not him. And when it's not him, start praying in the spirit. Start singing and worshiping. Start doing something. But don't give no place to the enemy. That's a dangerous thing. Because he is a beast. You let him get in there, he's going to try to take it all. And he's so cold, he bring demons with him. To take you over. This is nothing to take lightly. It's nothing to take lightly. And so we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we stand before you right now. Father, acknowledging how we might look to you. We know you love us and your love is everything. And you will forgive us our our sins and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness and to remember them no more. But Lord, we're standing in front of you broken. Lord, we submit every issue, every weight, every sin. We are surrendering it to you. Lord, teach us how to walk upright. Because where we come from, that doesn't come natural in the flesh. Teach us how to seek you. Teach us how to love you. Teach us how to receive from your word. Give us a hunger for your word. Help us to do good. Help us to want to do right. Help us to thirst and hunger after righteousness. Because you said if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. Lord, that's a promise you made because I see you. You're doing it. You're doing it. But Lord, help us. Let your spirit move on us right now. Lord, we need peace. Jesus, you said your peace, you leave us. Your peace, you give us. Not as the world. Because world peace and Jesus' peace are different. Lord, we need your joy. Your joy is our strength. Help us to understand the spiritual side. Help us understand the kingdom. Lord, you called us to be kingdom people, not world people. What the world is doing right now, I can see the difference. At first, I didn't understand between world system and kingdom system. I see it. World system is failing. Y'all better get off that ship before it sink and step over into the kingdom of God and learn the kingdom of God and let him heal us. So, Lord, we just thank you for this. We know you heard us. And I have one more scripture, and I'm going to sit down. I hope you guys are receiving this. This is one, was not one of those jump and shout messages. But this is one of those look inside yourself and fix yourself. God wants to heal us. He's not going to make us be, be healed. He's not going to make us receive it. He's letting us know, I'm reaching down to you. It's your job to reach up to me. And if you do that, We'll have it. How the word says, the Lord said, come now, let's reason together. Even though your sins are as scarlet, I will wash you as white as snow. He'll do it. And then my closing scripture is right here. Matthew 11, 28, 29. This is Jesus talking to us. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How many of us are burdened? COVID hit us like a storm, 
businesses closed. I lost two family members during COVID. People had deaths in the family. There was divorces. People got sick. People died from COVID. Our lives was affected. We could play like we was Teflon tough, but we were affected. And that's the other thing we got to get rid of. Quit playing so tough before God when we're not. We got to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. And in due season, he will lift us up. He will exalt us. We can't lift ourselves up. And then verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of him. If you got to come to class, learn of him. If you got to come to Bible study, learn of him. If you got to spend time in your house saying, Lord, I need to know you. I'm going to open my Bible and I might not understand. But Holy Spirit, you were there. You were the one who gave the man the inspiration to write this word. Holy Spirit, explain this to me. What does that mean? Show that to me. He will do it. He's our teacher. And he says, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Y'all trust God. Trust God.